What's up, guys? I, uh, earlier today, saw this video clip of Dr. Umar talking with the older black gentleman. And they were basically going in on Tariq and she, um, being petty and nitpicking, basically. And, listen, we don't have time for this shit. The pettiness. See, a lot of us foundational black Americans are calling out the disrespect that we receive from other Africans throughout the diaspora, and they don't like it. But you know what? Big fucking deal if you don't like it. Get used to this shit, because you're not going to keep treating us like crap, talking down on us and to us, and thinking you're better than us when white supremacy has their foot firmly fitted in your asshole. Because for some reason, other black people throughout the diaspora, other Africans throughout the diaspora, believe that we're the only ones who've been enslaved. You people have been colonized and completely mind-fucked by Europeans. But you think somehow you're a better type of slave than us. This is the stupidest shit that I've ever heard and seen in my life. You're literally arguing about whose slavery was better or worse. That's the stupidest shit. You niggas were slaves. You niggas were slaves. I was never a slave. They just colonized us and controlled our government, our currency, the languages we speak, the religions, the way we live, so on and so forth, and yada, yada, yada. Oh, and kept our countries destitute and poor. Yeah, but we're so much better than you because we were never... Shut the fuck up. This is stupid. And while you dumb motherfuckers are arguing about that shit, white supremacy is just, just, just gliding clear across the globe, chopping off black heads, stealing black wealth, and making us a fucking obsolete group of people. While you're arguing about dumb shit. Pocket watching people like Tariq. Talking all this shit about the things he's saying. And, and from what I've watched about Tariq, he has his own opinions. But for the, for the most part, the lessons that he gives us are directly taken from some of our elder scholars with whom everybody respects. And nobody refutes their information because it's solid and it's spot on. But Umar is going to refute our, ans our, our great scholar teachers. He's going to refute their words via Tariq. You understand this? You, do you understand this? I don't hear anybody actually go against the shit that Umar says because they know that a lot of our scholars would have supported a lot of the things that Umar talks about, if not all of them especially when it comes to the war against white supremacy. So nobody really nobody really refutes what he says because our scholars were of the same mind. But to me, it seems kind of agency to refute what Tariq's saying, even though he's repeating with things that the great Dr. Claude Anderson and the great late Dr. John Henry Clark would say, or Dr. Yosef Benyak and I know Ivan Van Sertima. He's saying some of the same things they would say, but yet it's wrong for him to say it. It's, it's causing dissent against Africans in the diaspora by saying this is bullshit. So listen, I'm going to read from you guys from a, a black history reader by Dr. Claude Anderson. Yes, I have his book. Now listen to what Dr. Claude Anderson says. Many blacks, non-blacks, and especially conservatives prefer the term African-American. In its term, I'm sorry, it is a term that removes race from a race-based dilemma and redirect focus to culture. African American is a less specific term than black, just as substituting terms like minority, people of color, and poor people is less threatening than the term black. Understand that. This is a political thing, separating ourselves from the term African American, as opposed to black America or foundational black American. Understand that. And everybody who knows Dr. Colin Anderson knows and understands this, but you'll argue with Tariq about the same shit. Come on, man. That's stupid. The term African-American obfuscates, dilutes, and erases the unique history of blacks in this country. Blacks should never be equated to African-Americans or other groups within minority classes. Usually the term African-American is an example of changing black problems to a minority solution. Since all life began in Africa, in the broadest sense, the label African-American can be applied to any human from any place on the earth that migrates to America. Once they establish residence in America, they can legitimately claim to be African-American, like white people, like the Boers from South Africa. 
They were born in Africa. They're African natives. They can come to America and claim to be African Americans. Or an Asian person born on the Af African continent. Understand. See how simple this is? And, and think about why so many different groups of people are colonizing Africa. For so many different reasons. But they can claim African American over here. And get benefits that were meant for us as African Americans. If we don't distinguish ourselves as foundational black Americans then we get screwed politically. This is fucking ABC shit here. Black exceptionality is a fundamental key to unlock the doors leading to group self-empowerment, recognition, respect, and appreciation for their contributions to the socioeconomic development of this nation to which they are entitled as special people. They must distinguish themselves by claiming their exceptionality as black Americans, just as Europeans in the 1680s, I'm sorry, distinguished themselves by officially labeling themselves white Americans instead of pilgrims or Puritans. The label white distinguished them thereafter due to the fact that the masses of blacks in America are totally ignorant of Africa. They identify with the African American label only out of love and respect for the black people residing on the african continent in physical and genetic makeup they are as far from being african blacks as they are from being european whites they are enormous i'm sorry there are enormous differences in the experiences of a black person born and raised in america versus an african born and raised on the continent of africa native blacks in america were stripped of their africanness centuries ago when their ancestors were transported to the americas it was at that point that their, their differences began. Blacks were forced to create and fabricate a culture that blended the various African tribal backgrounds with the American culture they found here. Being enslaved in America was a different experience than being colonized on the African continent. Being Africans, I'm sorry, African blacks were not stripped of their culture, languages, families, relatives, homeland, communities, religion, and sense of peoplehood. Where, on the other hand, black Americans were stripped in all respects, reduced to the level of field animals, and treated as disposable property. Consequently, African blacks who visit or migrate to the United States, listen to this, since they are different from native blacks and tend to express a degree of superiority over the descendants of slaves. They are different. And this is their sentiment largely throughout the diaspora, not just coming from Africa, but throughout the diaspora that they are different from us. We are something else other than them. And when we call them out on it, all of a sudden we're wrong and we're racist for putting them on blast for their hatred, for no reason against us, their coonish ass behavior. Fuck out of here. They came here voluntarily have homelands and relatives in Africa with whom they identify and communicate, and they have a place to return whenever they so choose. Americans recognize the difference. Also, and acc accord greater respect to African visitors and dignitaries than to native blacks. In fact, it was not unusual prior to the civil rights movement of the 1960s for some black Americans to dress in African garb and pretend to be African visitors or dignitaries just to garner greater respect from white Americans. Using unspecific terms like African American obscures the unique history of blacks in America and can have harmful effects similar to what happened when the terms minority people of color or pe poor people are used instead of black. A lawsuit filed in a Pakistan, I'm sorry, by a Pakistani who applied for the African American Banneker Scholarship at the University of Maryland in the 1990s demonstrates the folly of imprecise language. The university denied him a scholarship because recipients had to be African American. The Pakistani student filed a lawsuit charging the university with discrimination. The student's case was based on a very simple but reasonable explanation. The Pakistani student said he lived in Africa before migrating to the United States and considered himself African. Now that he lives in America, he is an African American. The Maryland Supreme Court agreed and ruled in the student's favor, awarding him $150,000. He wasn't even born in Africa. He just identified with the continent and claimed to be African. Now do you see the danger of us not separating ourselves as a distinct group? 
The message to Native Blacks is a caution. In circumstances where a race label is necessary, do not permit the use of broad, ambiguous terms to define you. The school did not meet its goal of providing scholarships for the specific purpose of attracting black students. The school's needs were specific, but the term African American was not. It expanded the target group in an imprecise way. Had the school used the term black, the Banneker Scholarship Fund would have had an additional $150,000 to distribute toward worthy black applicants. The distinction between black and African American is important. Blacks came here as Africans, but what they experienced in this country made them different. They were stripped of everything, their culture, language, religion, the right to benefit from their own labor. They were not acknowledged as humans and were denied the expression of natural human longings. They could not love, protect, or plan for their families. Blacks endured these experiences. All the while, their labor drove the economic engine that built this nation. Withstanding and surviving these experiences became the badge of courage that distinguishes Native Blacks from any other group in America. Those experiences signify this country's embeddedness, I'm sorry, indebtedness to them. They may be a diff there may be a difference in the terms and historical experiences, but the two groups are genetically linked. It is imperative, therefore, that Native Black Americans support and recognize Africa the birthplace of mankind and strive to protect its people and material resources from further abuse and exploitation by foreign entities. This is from Dr. Claude Anderson himself from his book, A Black History Reader that I just read. I just read a couple of pages out of for you. These are his, these are his sentiments. He agrees with what Tariq has said about us distinguishing ourselves as foundational black Americans because we are ethnically and culturally different. We are different and they know it and they tell us we're different. But as soon as we tell them, okay, we are different, stop coming over here riding in the backs of the work that our ancestors put in. If you're going to claim us, they come over here and fucking help us. Don't come over here and claim the benefits we work for and then separate and distinguish yourselves from us claiming that you're better than us. No, those days are over. And you don't have to be a scholar to be fucking smart. You don't have to be a scholar to take the lessons that our original scholars taught us and re and basically reiterate it to the people. Tariq doesn't have to be a scholar to take the lessons he learned from, from, from our, elder, our elder gods, heads of state. You know what I'm saying? And I say heads of state because all of our elder scholars could have been people who could have ran nations. I truly believe that. He's taking the information that he's learned from them and reiterating that back towards us. Because he's had Dr. Francis Cruz Welsing in his documentaries. Kava Kimane, Renoko Rashidi. And if you're disagreeing with Tariq, who's just repeating a lot of their same lessons, aren't you disagreeing with them? See, this kind of distraction, this kind of dissent is dang this is what's dangerous for us not a black man who found a way to make money and educate and help black people because Tariq is rare he's one of the few black men foundational black americans who has money who is actually making money and then using what he does to help educate and support black people please name somebody else that's in a position that he is that is a public figure like he is that's doing the type of work that he does for black people please name them because while Tariq is, I mean, while Umar is out in the public eye, we still haven't seen how the funds for that school have been appropriated. This nigga's still banging holes in walls from, from, from last I saw. And I was a supporter of Umar with this. But we're going on, what, five years now? If not more? And this nigga's still sweeping up trash in the dark. I'm sorry. Not to throw shade, but like, come on, get the fuck out of here. We're, so he's not going to claim that Dr. Claude Anderson or Dr. John Henry Clark is wrong. He's going to say that Tariq is wrong for repeating what they're saying. See, this sounds like agent shit to me. I'm sorry to, I'm sorry to say it, but that shit sounds like agent talk. This is stupid. It's petty. We don't have time for it. We don't have time for it. And if all you can do is argue and bid, bicker back and forth about the stupid, petty shit, the line has been drawn in the sand 
and your ass needs to get pushed off the edge of the cliff. Because this is dumb. We are not going to run a war against white supremacy by arguing and beefing over this kind of stupid ass shit. Because every second you spend arguing about this kind of shit, you're not combating the fucking enemy.